Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Glad that you're here. And as we enter into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the word of the Lord tells us this morning, it says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. And with that being said, brothers and sisters, let's lift up hands to the Lord and praise his wonderful and holy name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for allowing us to be in this church worship service. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for your goodness and your loving kindness yes, for God. God, you have magnified your word yes, above Jesus. your name. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You, Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Yes, thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We appreciate you, Jesus. Lord God. Oh, Lord. Uh, there's an, uh, a place where you can give. Really, the place that you can give is right there over in the um, comments section where there is a hyperlink there where you can click on. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto, as unto the Lord, of which you guys have been doing an excellent job of that. Keep it up. Keep um, walking with God. And... Um, and as we support the ministry, we can do greater and better things, okay? Yeah. And um, so we appreciate each one. Just want to let you know, and I will be catching you in a Zoom meeting here shortly. So to, to let y'all know what's going to be happening uh, with next week, okay? So our God is good. Want to give a shout out. I'm hoping that Nita is online this morning. I don't know if she is or not. But anyway, uh, want to shout out to her if she listens to it later. Also want to give a shout out to um, Sister Brittany. Want to say hello to you and uh, to all of the kids. And I want to give a shout out to Brian. Brian, Brian is on? Brian uh, Cole? Okay. What? Want to give a shout out to you, man. Glad that you're on this uh, morning. Also want to give a shout out to uh, Sister Constance. Thank God for Sister Constance, um, Brother Lance. Also, a shout out to Sister Natalie Bullard. Hey, I got to get that lasagna, I'm telling you. We got to do something with that, okay? <laughs> and uh, shout out to Sister Cotton. She ain't nothing but the cotton picking truth. You know what I'm saying? Sister Cotton ain't nothing but the truth. So, anyway, our God is good. A shout out to Timmy, Sister Serrano. Hello, Sister Alice Gay, uh, Sister Shimona, and little Josh. And just want to say hello, Sister Beatrice Serrano, I say that. And also Reverend Serrano's mom, one of Mrs. Uh, Serrano, I'm saying that right. I uh, want to say, have a shout out to her. So anyway, God is good. All right, let's get it rolling, y'all. Um, so let's pray over the gift and the giver. I don't think we pray over the offering. Uh, let us go ahead and ask God's blessing on the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus. For this time of giving, Father, we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to be coming out of the book of 2 Kings. I'm going to turn to it. You might already be there. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 11 through 12. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 11 through 12. Now watch this, y'all. I'm telling you, the word of God has a lot for us, right? It says, but Naaman was wroth. That word wroth means he was mad and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abna, Abna and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned 
and went up and went away in a rage. Let me read that one more time, Sterling. It says this. But Naaman was wroth. That means he was mad and went away and said, Behold, I thought. Stop right there. I want you to underscore that in your, in your Bible or underline that. I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. That means move his hand up and down, right, and recover the leper. Then verse 12 says, Are not Abna and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May, not, may I not wash in them and be clean? And he turned, watch this, y'all, and went away in a rage. Mm. <laughs> dude, the dude turned, the dude turned and went away in rage. Mm -hmm. All right. With the help of the Lord and the Holy Spirit and to God be all of the glory. Yes. We want to preach on the message entitled, The Problem with I Thought or thought. The problem with I thought. Mm. Just that will minister to us, right? And God is not into wasting your time. The Lord, I didn't know you was going to be here. I did not know. But the Lord knew that you would be here this morning, right? And God, he's already dealing with some of us. He's already dealing with us this morning, right? Really, he's right. dealing with all of us. Yes. God already knew what was what was going down this morning, right? And uh, and so to God be all of the glory. He is not into wasting people's time. Blame all the mistakes on me. I say that. You can blame him. But God doesn't mess up any messages. He doesn't mess up the English language. He doesn't mess up anything. He doesn't have to be edited or nothing mm -hmm. to make it sound perfect. Mm -hmm. The Lord knows how to get a perfect, clear message to the hearts of men and women that he loves because of who he is. And the title of the message again, The Problem with I Thought. Let us pray. Reverend Serrano, sir, if you don't mind asking God's blessing on this church worship service, please. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Lord, for revealing your will to us, Lord God. For showing us how you can heal, how you draw people to you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've accomplished through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for each and every person that is here joining us to worship you, Lord. We pray that you will open up hearts, Lord, that people will be inviting you in this morning. Help pastors to preach is that which you laid on his heart, Lord. And let the result of this service be that your name will be glorified. The people will be saved, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, y'all. Let's get on with it because I don't want to lose anyone. Here in the word of the Lord, we read about a man, a historical account about a man by the name of Naaman, the captain of the, of the armies of the king of Syria. This Naaman was a general. He was, the Bible said, he was a great and an honor. He was an honorable man. He was a great and honorable man, but the problem that Naaman had was that he was a leper. And a, a, a person that was a leper had the disease called leprosy. And leprosy was a type of disease that caused your limbs to fall off. It is a deadly disease, right? Lepr uh, um, leprosy is still around today. We just don't see it here in America, not quite off, no doubt. There are probably few cases, but um, this disease is still around today. And, and, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it is still incurable. <laughs> it is still incurable. This is something uh, that you do not want, right? And this man, Naaman, had a very serious problem. He had an issue that was, threat that was threatening his life, man. This dude was about to die. He really did not have, uh, no doubt, too long on the earth as long as this leprous disease would continue, all right? 
So as the word reads, uh, there, he had a, a little maid. This little maid, the Bible even talks about, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of all the land of Israel, in verse 2 of chapter 5, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. So it's funny how the Bible calls this lady a little maid. It's seeming, it seems like uh, the Holy Spirit is trying to bring out the, uh, 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 the humility that is needed in Naaman's life, right? Mm. And so uh, this little maid waited on Naaman's wife, knowing that Naaman had this serious problem. And so uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the little maid said, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he will recover him of his leprosy. In other words, this maid had told her mistress, about a prophet over in Samaria that could help Naaman with this situation. You know, God always has helps for us, right? Whether or not we would listen to them, whether or not we would take their words and utilize them in our lives, right. that's a whole nother ball game. Yes. There are people who come with very valuable information, right? They come with words of eternal life, right? That's what the word tells us about Jesus. Peter recognized it in the Lord. He said, For whom shall we to whom shall we go? After Jesus said, Will you go away also, like the rest of these people did? And then Peter said, To whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life, right? Let me tell you something. God ain't gonna make you listen to him. The Lord is not going to send a preacher to make you listen to him. You have to make up that your mind yourself to listen to uh, guidance, yes. sound guidance that can deliver any man from sins yes. and a hurtful life, right? Jesus came to save us from our sins. Yes. Jesus, his, his name is uh, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Right? Yes, amen. God with us. There is not a soul that the Lord does not want to help, right? Amen. But the problem with the soul that God wants to help is what's going on in their heart. Yes. What's going on yes. in their heart, right? Yes. Amen. And so as we read on, uh, uh, the, the, mist, uh, the little maid told her mistress, who is Naaman's wife, about this servant, right? And the word said, and one went in and told his Lord, saying, thus and thus said the maid that, that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, go to now, go to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of, of raiment. So according to the scripture in verse five, uh, the king of Syria uh, was wanting uh, the man of God over in Samaria to, he was wanting to connect with him. Mm -hmm. So he sent the letter out to the king of Israel, right? And so the king of Israel had got this letter and he began to respond uh, being a little bit fearful. And he, and I'm trying to make this short, just condense it. And the letter and the news came to the ears of Elisha. Mm -hmm. The news came to the ears of Elisha. And the word tells us that Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Naaman came, the one that had the leprosy, came to the door of the house of Elisha and he was standing there. And no doubt they knocked on the door and tried to get Elisha to come out. But here's the thing, though. Naaman came with his own plans <laughs> of how things are to be done. That is the way he was coming to the man who had the answer for him. Y'all follow me for a moment. I'm trying to be clear here. Naaman already had, had contemplated in his heart, oh, Elisha's going to do this. This is going to happen. And that's going to happen. And all this, he already had put it all together. When he didn't have it together, he already had made up in his mind how things was going to run. 
Because again, Naaman was the captain of the host of the armies of the king of Syria. Naaman was a highfalutin man that was in charge all the time, right? And he was going to try to take charge of the situation just naturally because that's, what he, that's the way he's always done things. And let me tell you something, when coming to God, when coming to Jesus, you can't go around and I can't go around doing things because that's the way we always have done things, right? Jesus is the king. Jesus is the Lord. He is the savior. We need him. He don't need us. And the same thing here, right? Naaman needed Elijah. Elisha did not need him. Naaman needed Elisha's walk with God, right? Because Naaman didn't have a walk with God. <laughs> Naaman didn't have a walk with God. That's right. Naaman was uh, an idol worshiper, no doubt. Mm -hmm. He was an honorable man, yes. Mm -hmm. He took care of his soldiers, yes. He took care of the little maid, yes. He took care of his servants, yes. But the thing is, he had no walk with God, and he needed the Lord, yes. not his own opinion. That's right. right. Let me say that again. He needed the Lord and not his yes. own opinion. All right. right. And so as we look at the, at the scripture, the word of the Lord tells us, and Elijah sent a messenger unto him. Check this out, right? Elijah is inside of his house. Naaman's servant, no doubt, because Naaman was too good to knock on the door. Naaman's servant knocks on the door. His little servant knocked on the door, right? Elisha sends his messenger down stairs, you know, opens the door. And then he said to Naaman and all that was listening, and directly to Naaman because he was the one that was in need. He said, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. Goop, close the door. <laughs> Servant, go right back in. See, see, the thing is, see, Naaman was wanting Elisha to come down and do all this, right? Mm -hmm. But Elisha sent the servant because Elisha followed the instructions of God. Yes. Elisha was not being proud. Elisha did not have a problem with I thought. Naaman had the problem with I thought, right? Mm -hmm. Elisha did not have that I thought problem. I thought it should be done this way. He was doing things God's way. God no doubt told Elisha, send the messenger down. Have the messengers talk to Naaman and tell him to go dip in, dip in Jordan seven times and he'll be healed. All right. See, that means that Naaman had to get past himself and say, I'm going to trust the word of God or what God has said. I'm going to trust this man of God and do what he said. But no, listen to what the word says in verse 11. It says, but Naaman was mad mm. and angry and said, behold, I thought. I really thought, I, wait a minute, what, what's this? He sends his servant down. Why didn't he come down and wave his hand and say, uh, the Lord God of Israel, deliver me of this, uh, deliver Naaman of this leprosy. Why didn't he come down and do this? And he sent his servant down. And, and then he wants me to go dip in the, dip in the river of Jordan seven times. I thought... Let me tell you something, y'all. The most difficult person to tell, the most difficult person to tell uh, the truth to and give guidance to, the most difficult person for God uh, by the Holy Ghost to, to reach are the people who go by I thought. All right. They put the I thoughts uh, thing, is it, those are the stumbling blocks that keeps Jesus out of your heart, that keeps the Lord from moving uh, inside of a person's heart, that causes the, mir the miracle of salvation to uh, pretty much not enter into the person when God is trying to enter into the person. But the person says, I thought it should be done this way. All right. I thought it should be done that way. This Naaman was upset about what was going on and he began to question everything. He began to say, are not uh, Abana 
and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. All the waters of Israel. Are not those waters better? This is the thing, the problem with people who live, who have the problem of I thought. <laughs> and when, when they get convinced of this stuff, it's hard to get them to see it another way. They can go after the wrong things in their life. They can go after the wrong stuff in their life. And, the, and they are so convinced of them. They are so persuaded about the wrong thing. Yes. Uh, uh, reaping or being rewarded with hurtful pain uh, in their life. They are rewarded with sin and destruction. Mm -hmm. And no way to pray to God and losing the battle of life every day because I thought, I, I really thought we need the facts. That's right. Amen. You, and I don't know the problem when you don't believe the facts, you're in trouble. Yes. <laughs> the fact was this God didn't care about any war. You know, God made the seven seas. He made all kinds. Of, he made so much water. There's water even above the universe. You look up in the sky, you see all this black out there. What's all that black that's out there? Think about it. God divided the waters from below in the book of Genesis chapter 1 from the waters from above. Brothers and sisters, there's water up there. God has so much water. God ain't worried about what water. <laughs> All right. Now, now Naaman thought that, but God wasn't. God was worried about not even worried about that. He said, "If you want to be healed, you're gonna have to do it my way." All right. That's what the Lord was saying. Amen. You're gonna have to do it my way. That's right. This is the particular spot you, you need to go to. And so what I'm trying to tell somebody this morning is you got to get past your thoughts yes. and get a hold of God yes. and tell the Lord, I don't care what I think, right? I am going to go and dip in the place you want me to dip in. And that is the blood of Jesus. Yes. All right. And so here in the word of the Lord, uh, this man, Naaman, his servant came to him. Because, see, the thing is, Naaman was really an honorable man. He was good to his people. He was a great man. That's why the little maid was looking out for him. And now the little servant is looking out for him. The word says, and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? It says, how much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean, yeah. right? And Naaman actually listened. Yes. He, and there was a wrestling match. See, when, when people go by, by, I thought, when that's a problem, you know, it's a wrestling match with the truth, you know, and I'm telling you. One man said this, you are, your thoughts will mold your future. Mm -hmm. Whatever is going on in, up here yes. is, uh, is pretty much uh, telling you what kind of future you're going to have. All right. And I'm here to tell you this morning, we got to feed ourselves with the right things yes. because the brain will automatically put out the right things when we feed ourselves with the right things. Yeah. If we feed ourselves with doubt, fear, confusion, right? We feed ourselves with falsehood. We feed ourselves with sin from God knows where, right? You, your mind will literally reap it. This is just as natural as throwing this phone up and down. It has to come, when you throw it up, it has to come down. You feed yourself where I can't, you're going to get I can't. All right. And you're really not going to be able. <laughs> you know, when you feed yourself with, with a, I, I have to live in sin and I'm on my way to hell, don't worry about it. You will wind up in hell. Yes. 
You will reject Jesus. Everything about the Lord, you reject God. You feed yourself with uh, 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 all these reasons of why I, uh, to not accept the Lord right now. Guess what? You're going to reap it. Yes. You're going to reap it. And at the same token, if you feed yourself with good things, feed the heart with good things, with blessings, holiness, righteousness, wealth, no matter what it is, guess what? When you and say, I can, when you feed yourself with that, you're going to reap that. Because those are your, that's what, that's what's in you. And it's a, it's a law that cannot be broken. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody. Game changer, man. That's a game changer. This, this message this morning can literally save somebody's life. It can save their life. And I'm talking about both. Both physically and spiritually. It can save your life if you listen. Get beyond how, how I'm bringing it or what, whatever. But you know that the, the primary thing, the problem with I thought, I thought, I thought judging according to appearances, I thought judging according to appearances when it comes to the Lord will kill you because sometimes looking at God, especially when somebody doesn't even know the Lord, looking at the Lord, sizing him up and everything, it don't look good when you're not in it because David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He yes. didn't say, oh, look and see. All right. He said, taste the food and see. Yes. You can look at food. Some food don't look that good. That's right. But when you bite into it, you go, mm, this is some good stuff. Yes. Right? That spinach stuff, the first time I had, I, I don't know, it's them, that spinach casserole that Sister Davis made. Man, that thing is dark green and light green. You know, it, it's, it's a funny looking green. And it looked like, a, it, it looked funny. It really looked funny, but it tastes, it, it tastes pleasurable. You eat that stuff, mm, it's that spinach mixed with chicken and all that. Oh my goodness, man. Jalapeno chicken. Jalapeno chicken and all that. But looking at it, if I went by looks, I would have never ate it. That's right. All right. right, tell it. I thought, the problem of I thought, yes. Naaman listened to the servants, though, after they got finished wrestling with him. After God used the, used the servants, really it wasn't one little servant, it was a bunch of servants. <laughs> it was a bunch. Come on, boss, come on, man. Hey, look, man, you a good man. Do this, man, come on, man. All this tug of war with people, right? God always in a tug of war because he loves you. You know the Lord going to be in a tug of war? Does he have, how long is the tug of war going to happen, right? Are we going to go all the way to the grave with this? Because on the other side of this, it's too late, right? And so they're in a tug of war. They have this discussion. And, and so the prophet humbled himself and he went and did. And he had to do it seven times. And so he went down, no doubt, the first time. Came back up. I thought it would be gone by now. Hey, dude, look. The man said seven times, boss. Seven Yes. He dipped again, two, dipped again, stubbornly three. Still got, y'all gonna, if I look like a fool, I'm gonna have your heads. <laughs> Knowing this, he probably got upset. Cause because the Bible said that at one time he walked off. Yes. The man walked off. That's what people because he thought it should be done this way. It wasn't done that way, so he walks off in a pout. I'm always in jail. I'm always, I'm always this, and I'm always that. All right. I just got finished talking to a guy not too long ago. You know, you wasn't raised, we wasn't raised the same. It has absolutely not. That is the most stupidest thing to think. That's right. You, we, uh, 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 you was raised differently. What, what in the world that got to do with anything? I don't care. I'm no better, and you're no better than me. We're the same at the cross That's is right. level at the cross. That's I believe right. Reverend Kinson said that the ground is level at the cross, right? You was raised. So what? Oh, guess what? There are people who are raised in Christian families and wind up being the worst people you can meet. 
Yes. And there were people who were raised in abusive families wind up being the most awesome people you can ever run into. Yes. What you got to say about that, right? That's right. Right? You got people who were raised good, they're down in the gutter. gutter. People who were raised bad. And they're up, way up here. Don't give me that garbage. Because right there, you're going to kill yourself that way. And be like Naaman, walk away from God angry with your thoughts. The same destructive thoughts and the same destructive sins and the same destructive garbage. And your brain is producing it all day long. Hey, check this out, y'all. Let me give you an example. Here's a guy who has a hard time. He's having a hard time. He does not know God, doesn't know Jesus, and he and he's broke. So he has, he's contemplating in his heart, how can I get some money? So he goes and get his gun <laughs> and go and go put a gun to somebody's head and robs them. That's his only way out because of the way he, he discerns. You get another guy who's walking with God in a reality and he's broke. He loves the Lord. He's committed to God. He's all the way in. And he goes out and he talks to different pastors. He, he goes out talks to his pastors, different brothers and sisters. He goes out, gives himself, say, God, I'm willing to do whatever you have me to do. He goes out and he finds a job. Preachers know people and people know people and, and he, he does not want to hurt anyone. And the next thing you know, he winds up being blessed of the Lord. He finds a place to work and he's able to feed his family. And there is somebody who's going to look at this video and go, uh-uh, man. Don't tell me no uh-uh. Don't tell me no uh-uh. All right. Seek and ye shall find. It That's happened right. to me and it's happened to many others. That's right. I'm not the only one. That's I've, right. I've been in a bind before, yeah. but I ain't go rob someone. That's right. Right? Right? I've been, Rev been in a bind before too. He didn't go rob somebody. That's right. That, was, that wasn't even a thought. You know, it's funny how that uh, that can actually come to a person, but that does not ever come to me or has not ever, I doubt, came to real. Right. right? It, it don't, those things don't just come to us, not because of the way that we're raised. It's just that that's not an option. All right. I'll figure it out. Amen. And there's some people out there going, uh-uh, and that's your problem. You just like naming. But but to a degree. But naming went and dipped. Yes, he did. Right? He went and dipped. I figure it out, man. I don't, I don't want to make this message about me. Look, if you want to fellowship with me one of these days, call me on the phone then. We'll talk about it. Because I don't want to make this message. Don't tell me that you can't make it in America. Yes. Don't tell me that you can't do it. That's right. And I got it. And all I have is one choice. One choice. Listen how silly that sounds. I'm broke. Only got one choice. One choice to rob somebody. You mean to tell me in your common sense that's, that's, that that is the only option? Mm. You mean to tell me in your common sense that's the only option? You a fool. You a fool. You a straight up fool. You think that. They need to really get saved. You don't know Jesus. That's you don't have the blood of God whatsoever. Because a fool will do something like that. The only option I have is to go sell some dope for $50. The only option for $50. I can go out and wash a car somewhere for that. Yes. Right? I can go out. I can I can get a little lawnmower and walk down the street and knock on every door. I'll find $50. Yes. But I don't have to rob it. Right. You know, I make a business out of it Amen. from a small lawnmower, from a little pressure washer. <laughs> and next day, you know, I got about eight or nine trucks out there. Amen. Strange, isn't it? But I had to go rob something. You mean that's the only option? You, 
The only option I have is to commit fornication with that woman. That's the only option I have. The only option I have mm -hmm. is to lie about this. The only option I have is to re reject Jesus. Don't do what he said because I thought it should work this way. All right. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you something. There's some things, brothers and sisters, I don't want to ever, ever even entertain yes. as an option. Amen. For real. Listen to this, y'all. Naaman's on the fourth time, came back up. On the fifth time, they dipped him again. He came back up. And time number six, he came back up. Well, man, I still got left. I don't see nothing's happened. You know, people want convenience, don't they? Yes, they do. They're, they're in, it, I look the same as the first dip. He probably was about to get out the water because I thought <laughs> that some of the leprosy should be gone by now. And I'm getting embarrassed. Go ahead, sir. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I thought that some of it would be washed out, but I still look the same. I still feel the same. I'm getting out of this pool, man. But here comes that servant. Yes. Here comes the little preacher. He says seven yes. times. What's up with seven? This idol worshiper. Mm. Don't realize it's God's number. Mm. <laughs> and so, no doubt, fighting through his tangled up, messy heart. All right. <laughs> they got him to dip one more time and when he dipped that seven time when he came up the bible said that his skin was like baby skin yes mm, mm, mm. because of some people who had to fight and get in a wrestling match with his i thought mm. You know, God over here, here wrestling you, wrestling with you, and wrestling with you, All man. Right. And you over here throwing your life away. Mm -mm -mm. All that time. All, man, it, my, my time means something to me, man. For real. For real. I don't know. Naaman could have saved probably 30 minutes of his life, <laughs> but at least they got to him. Yeah. Because, you know, you're wasting your time running around in circles, man. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 50, 60, 70, 75, just run around, run around in circles because of I thought, run around, run around, and now it's time to close your eyes in death, and you only live one-tenth of your life. Golly, that's rough, ain't it? I thought, I thought I'd feel something when Jesus saves. Really? I thought, I thought this would happen when Jesus saved me. Oh, really? Don't do it to yourself. Amen. Follow this word. Put good things in your brain. I've grown, I'm, I'm going to say it again, I'm about to get out of here. I really have grown. I'm, at, I'm 48 years old. I keep bringing up my age a lot because I'm very thankful to the realizations that I have come to. And I wish I came to them when I was three. <laughs> man, let me tell you, man, you would waste some real time, man. Yes. And um, one thing I've grown to respect is the thing between my ears called my brain. The greatest equipment you have is your brain, y'all. And whatever you put in that thing, yes. it will return. That's right. Guess what? And, and you cannot avoid it. It has to return, y'all. And that's why the word of the Lord tells us, it says, what is that? What does it say, Sister Constance, over in the book of Proverbs? It says, keep thine heart with all diligence, <laughs> for out of it are the issues of life. Out of it, out of it are the issues of life. 
Don't hang with folks who putting poison in your coffee. <laughs> That's what Jim Rohn said. Because right. you might drink it and die. That's right. And I don't want something that's going to kill me inside of here. Amen. Right? right? I thought, what do you want what, what do you want me to do, preacher? I want you to come to Jesus. Yes. Dip in the blood of Jesus yes. Christ and let him save you for real. Yes. Right? right? I'm talking about for real, real sake. Not fake saved. That means you got to offer up a for real, real prayer. And keep the work in your heart. And read your word. And call you. Even, hey, call me for small talk. You don't have to be anything big. That's what I try to tell somebody. Some of you need to just call me just to say, hey, what's going on, man? Nothing. All right, just call you. Bye. And hang up. Just that will bless you. Just that, because you made contact with the pastor. None. Just that, you know. Now, now, no, Sister Constance doesn't do that. No, and and but there are some people. There are some people to change because Sister Constance is is grounded. Now, I'm not I'm not trying to to elevate her, but she just comes to thought. But the thing is, if you're struggling, you need to start making contact. Yes. You just kind of, and I ain't gonna embarrass you and go around and say, oh, so and so call. But Pastor, that's humbling. And say, wait, hey, call me until you can take off your training wheels. Amen. For real. Amen. I, you, we need training wheels in life. Call me until you can take off your training wheels. Till you can say, okay, I can ride this bike now. Okay? And don't feel embarrassed. Let us find a place, a place to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus. For all the things that you have done. We appreciate you, dear God, for the message. And Lord, let us forever walk with you, dear God. And let us be clear-headed and level in you, dear Jesus. Let us be people who seek and look for and walk with the things that are of God. And Lord, we will ever love you. And be what you would have us to be, say what you would have us to say, and go where you would have us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, well, Pastor, I thought we was, hey, if God needs you to pray after this, go pray. Seek God, walk with him, right? Yes. Let's get off of that I thought thing, the problem with I thought. Hey, may God bless you real good. Guess what? I got some good news, y'all. Church tonight. At 6.30. Amen. May God bless you real good.